All right, Travis with Splunk here. In a previous video, and I'll make sure to link to that, I took a search and or, or report and converted that to a dashboard. And here is that dashboard I built with three panels, you know, nothing fancy about it. So I thought, why not go in and show how to dress this dashboard up to make it a little bit more fun to look at. We're gonna have a lot of fun here. So first, before I do anything else, I wanna clone this dashboard. I don't like, I have something that's working. I don't wanna really work on that one. So I'm gonna clone it. And there's two ways that we can do this. From the dashboard itself, we could click on actions here and clone the dashboard. Or if you would like, go into dashboards, which will take you to this screen. And we can actually come and find the dashboard. And then here is another way to clone it. And while you're here, let me clone it first. Clone, and I'm gonna click edit. But while we're looking at this dashboard page, I just wanna remind you if you're looking for inspiration ideas or how to do something, and we do have resources here. If this is the first time you've watched one of my videos, um, here you can see visit example hub, intro to dashboard and intro to classic dashboard. Now inside of the example hub, there is some hidden gems in here that you may not be aware of underneath design elements, which I'm going to be playing with one part in here is the shapes and lines. And that's besides doing a wallpaper on the other one, I'm going to add some of these elements into that dashboard to show you how you can dress it up and make it more interactive or more fun. So there's, you know, different ideas, some, you know, the, the back end code to make this all work. Let's close this out. And of course you can go out to docs.splunk.com, Splunk's documentation. I'll make sure to have this link in the description. So if you want to come out here and look at the visualizations, the different pieces that you can add to your dashboard, there's a lot of good documentation in here. And I'll, like I said, I'll make sure to include that in the uh, description. So let's go back to my dashboard. I'll, I'll just leave that one open. And what I'm going to start off with first is let's let's change the background. I'm going to move this over. I know the background I want to put in here. I'll click here on the back you know, page here on a you know, behind everything, which will bring up the canvas and go down to background image. I'll browse and I have a few uh, wallpapers to choose from. And this is the one I wanted to, to introduce and bring into this one. I'm gonna move this over. I'll leave the height alone for right now. I think it's a, a decent height. And then I'll click view. Now we could, you know, leave it here all today. You know, have a funny wallpaper. I'm going to start adding some other pieces in. Now let's go back and click edit here. There we go. And what I'm going to do, I didn't like how the panels were sticking out. They weren't kind of blending into the page. So I'm going to click on each panel and go down to color and style and make the background transparent. Do that for all three of these here which you know, makes, you know, makes everything kind of blend in a little bit more. But if you really liked you know, the separation, you know, not, you know, not it blending in and you want to add lines back in or you know, do some other fun things, we can do that. Click edit again. And what I'm going to do is for this you know, group of objects, the add and shape from this menu, we are going to select, you know, let's select a line. And sometimes it puts it in places that are not as obvious. We can start moving this line around. There's a lot of different things that we can do with this line. I could actually attach it because if you notice when I click on one of the ends of the line, you know, we can attach it to the, the different panels. And once you attach it, you know, if I move a panel or resize a panel, it actually moves the line around with it. So you can, you know, draw out 
different pieces between different objects. You know, if you wanted an arrow, you know, I could put an arrow in here, have a starting point. Maybe a little hard to see there, so let me uh, increase the thickness. So now you can see I've got an arrow pointing this way. Um, if I want it to, I can put a, a starting point and at the end point. I can you know, make a dash in between them. You know, there's a lot of different things that we can do here. I can change the color of the um, arrow. So if I want a green arrow, if I want a red arrow, um, there's a lot of things we can do. I can not make it as strong. 100, I'm going to go back to that. Actually, I'm going to hit Control Z. So I get back to, and I don't think I can control Z anymore. I'm going to separate this end here, separate this end here. Oops. There we go. And then I'm going to make this a little bit bigger, move this over. You know, we can just, you know, adjust it to your needs and how you want this to look. I'm going to actually take off the arrows and I'm going to make it. You know, I'm going to make it orange. There we go. And once you have a style, because I've now I've got these two panels separated, I could just, you know, on a Windows computer, control C, control V, make a copy of it, you know, move it down here. We can make adjustments, how high we want it. You know, that looks, you know, if I wanted, you know, you know, artistic style, I want to put a little space there. We could do that. And now I have, you know, a little bit of a separation between the different panels. If you would like that. Let's keep, let's keep uh, moving forward here. Now, next object I'm going to play with is a rectangle. Now, what's fun about this and what I like to do, and you can see, you know, the line is over top of it, but you know, we can adjust that because I can actually click on line actually i don't know if i can move the line back further i think it is going to be always on top as far as i can tell from here but the panel here we can actually move this back i mean there is an icon right here for layers and we could send this all the way to the back you know if you want to leave here i'll show you if you really do want to leave a, a gray square there you could but I'm not going to do that. What I'm actually going to do is bring it back forward. Because I'm going to do, I'm going to, what I'm going to do is highlight the up and the down here. First, let's get this in the right size. It's actually, let's make it easier to know where it's at. So in the fill color, underneath color and style for this rectangle, I'm going to click on transparent. There we go. Now I can see what's going on a little bit more. Um, you can adjust the color. So we can, you know, the stroke color, that's the line going around it. Click on that again. You can you know, click whatever one here you would like, or we could customize, you know, set that color, to what we want. And I'll probably do that over here. I'll show you that here in a second. But first, let's get this one done. And I'm just going to hit yellow. You know, we could leave it around there, but I, I'm, I want to make a little... Do something a little bit cooler so let's look at the you know the fill the stroke that's uh the width and the style and the dash style and radius so stroke you know, how thick is the line going to be uh dash style now that is something that's i find fun to play with and if you go back to our documentation you know it goes in there and talks about that down here uh yeah line dash style and it'll actually give you a uh like if you put yep, right here you know if you put a four it's four pixels long with spaces of four pixels i'm not going to try to do the math or anything like that what i'm going to do is just start clicking the up arrow until i find something that i like and what i've done before is like you know 100 and then I'm like, do I like this? Do I want to keep this? Does this look neat? Which it does kind of look neat. You know, can I adjust that even more? Another thing I'd like to adjust is the radius. So the corners itself. So instead of having such a hard edge, I could adjust the radius. And start rounding the corners. 
and you can see it starts making cool little designs here and I'm not having to go out and download anything, but it's adding a little flair to the dashboard. Uh, if I like this, I want to bring this over to my other dashboard, which do 12. It's seconds. Yeah, there we go. Kind of like that right there. So if I like that, I'm going to actually copy and move this over to my up. Now, what I could do is, I wonder what happens if I were to, and you can see every time I click the up and down arrow, it's making changes. So I can make each box a little bit different. Uh, you know, I could put this back to 12 and then change this to you know 180 or something. And now I have you know, a little bit, you know, it's very similar, but a little bit different. I don't know. I'll leave that right there. Uh, if I wanted to, you know, I, I talked about the color of this here. I want it to match the line that's in my line chart here. So let's go down here. Let's click on this. And here's the color that I'm using. I can easily just copy that. Go back to this, which is my rectangle that I've been playing with and change the color here. So now it matches the color there. The last thing I want to do in this video is circles. But I'm going to take it to a next step or another feature that I haven't really been talking about this whole time with all of these different shapes. But let me first by getting a circle in here, click on image. We're not doing images today. And you can see I have a circle now. There is, and yeah, let me delete this image. Now, I'm going to put it over here. This is this, you know, just for fun. I'm going to make this circle and I'm going to replace that over the eyes that are there. I can manually give it a height and width if I want to make sure that it's a you know, perfect circle. And I want two of them. So I'm going to control C, control V. And now I have two circles. The you know, the extra step I want to talk about, I haven't talked about with any of the shapes has been each one of these shapes. I've been using a static color. Now we can go in and I'll click on the circle. And if I show you, you can actually you know, have a dynamic element to that color. Even with the line here, if I click on that, you know, I could have a dynamic element here and say, hey, if I have a search that's given me a number, we can start changing the color of this line. I'm going to put this back. Go. I'm only going to mess with the circles here and show you what I'm talking about. So I can set up a you know primary data source. Here is the, the video I showed you how to use just one search. We can keep with that theme to where. I'm not going to be able to use this search without having a chain search because I want to change. You know, I only want one number for like the down speed and change the eye color to that. So what we can do, and I'll show you, I can copy all of this. And I'm going to go into a search and show you what I'm going to end up doing. You know, I could you know, create another search and just have two searches running on this dashboard like this or and you can see I've got what 88.56 or I could go let me hit control Z and bring this back and just do a chain search with with stats average down and it gives me the same number so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to copy this portion right here and hopefully the, hopefully you're able to see the search there. I'm going to copy that. I am actually going to off that click on the set up primary data source, create a chain search, all this I one. I'll show you uh, with the one search and I'm going to create a second one to show you the, uh, 
how it does change. And here I have stats average down. I'm going to click apply and close. Nothing's happening yet because I haven't told it to use you know, the dynamic fill. Now I could do fill in stroke and have different you know, pieces. We have the line around there do stuff. But all I'm going to do today is show you that it does work. Um, if I bring open, if I open the dynamic fill here, you can see that it is above 80, but it's not 100. So it's not that that green. If we want, I have no, I don't have that color. Let's grab this color here. I can show you that it is working. So if I want, I could change the top color to this here. The other thing I could do, what I'm going to do is click on the other circle and actually do another search and another chain search. I'll call this I2. I'm going to select my base search and then the same thing I did that's average and we're going to say up. You know, nothing too fancy here. I do rename my. That may be a little bit easier to see. I don't know, but um, here you can see I do rename. And I'll, I'll post this search again in the uh, description. There we go. I do rename this average and eval round and all of that to just one simple field to type as down here and as up there. So that's all I'm doing now. So I got to do another stats average and then up. I could say as up again if I wanted to, but I'm not really worried about that. I'll click apply and close. We're going to do the dynamic fill again. And you can see that that eye is red now. So this could be my download for my average um, last 24 hours. And this could be my upload. If I wanted to, I could put a, a D in a up or you know, if you really want to add other things. But what I want to what I really wanted to show you is if you have a dashboard and you just need a quick red green. Is this, you know, I got one server is, you know, how well is it performing? You know, you can do that inside of Splunk Core. All right, let me click save. This is my cloned one. Let's view this. There we go. We do. Now we have a dashboard with a little bit more elements to it. Just a little bit more fun. Um, oh, yeah. Edit. I could have changed the legend. Now I'm you know, getting distracted. But, yeah, I could put this legend at the bottom there. You know, I could start adding you know, another one of these around to that as well. Boop, B. There we go. If I wanted to, you know, there we go. We can make this a little bit bigger. Then you know, change the color to that you know, purple. And if you really wanted to, and you know, Control C, Control V, create a second one, make it blue. You know, if you want to confuse or, you know, start playing with the the dashes. Now I could, you know, say a hundred on that. And this is where you can just start having fun with it. Hope you find this video helpful. Showed you some of the different ways to have fun in Splunk and to really go in and make the dashboard your own. Give it a little more pop. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave it below. And happy spelunking.